Uh, but let me, let me start by telling you a story. Um, th- when I'd been a Christian for about two years, I was going to Bible college. My father owned a, uh, a go-kart track. So I had all kinds of stuff. I had a video game arcade and other things, but it had a, had a go-kart track. And one night in particular, we were super busy. We had a big event going on. People were right, and there were these guys there that were high. Okay, I can't prove it. I didn't, I didn't like give them a drug test or anything, but I just know. I've been, I would, had been around long enough. These guys were high. I told my dad, don't, don't let these guys ride, but my dad let them ride. And long story short, one of them, uh, while my dad was fixing a go-kart in the middle of the track, because that's how my dad rolled, um, and another guy slammed his leg in between his go-kart and the other go-kart that my dad was fixing. And my dad ended up being fine. He had a sprained ankle. He didn't like break it, but it looked nasty. And I had been running. Now, some background. I did not grow up in the Lord. I didn't grow up coming to church. Um, and that does, it's not an excuse for being a, a punk or an idiot. But, um, but I, I chose nothing close to uh, living a moral life. And so I used a lot of bad language was one of the things. And so when I came to Jesus, I worked really hard at stopping saying cuss words. Two in particular. Um, I heard these two all the time um, from my football coaches of all places, but it was the Lord's name in vain. And there's at least two ways to say that. There's cursing God's name and, and then cursing Jesus' name. And I heard those all the time. And it had been two years since I'd been a believer, and when I watched this go-kart slam into my dad's leg, I'd already told this kid to watch out, blah, blah, blah. Get, I see it, and I scream the Lord's name in vain. I like, I like curse the Lord. I mean, I wasn't... I don't know that I meant that in my heart, but it just this old habit just came out. And I ran over to him, and I know by looking at me, this is going to be hard to believe in adrenaline and stuff, but I picked this really big guy up out of the go-kart, picked him up over my head, and slammed him to the ground, which I'm just going to say, I'm sorry, Lord, but that's the coolest part of the story. The next part was not good. I looked, I threw him down, and I said, he would, I don't think he was high anymore. I think he was sober like that. And I said to him, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kill you. Right? And then I hear my dad say my name, but not Dusty. Because when I'd get in trouble, even at 20 years old, he didn't call me Dusty. I got called Dustin. Right? And it, was, it still sends chills up my spine. I got in trouble a lot, but I hear him say, Dustin, get away from him. Get inside. And Darius, my good friend, walked me inside. And I'm like, <laughs> right? Just all this anger came up out of, well, not really nowhere. Let me tell you what I mean. I, were, I really was a decent guy. I loved Jesus with all of my heart. That was real. That was genuine. And I was trying to live well. But here's the truth and a truth for us tonight. The stuff deep down in our hearts. I'm going to pull this over here. The stuff deep down in our hearts, it leaks out bit by bit. With every word you say, with every action that you take. The stuff that's in your heart is going to come out. Jesus said this in Matthew 15, verse 19. He said, out of the heart come evil thoughts. And then he lists a bunch of other sins. And this includes sinful anger. Here's the big idea tonight. Anger happens. God's remedy is calm and peace. Calm and peace. Listen to this, Psalm chapter 4, verse 4. When, not if, because you're going to get angry. When you're angry, do not sin. Do you know that anger is not a sinful emotion? I mean, it, it shows it right there. When you're angry, don't sin. You can be, Jesus was angry. We have moments of this in the Bible. You can be angry and not sin. Anger is not a bad, evil emotion. But often how we respond to our anger is sinful and bad. On the go-kart track for me when I was 20 years old, it's probably easy for you to sympathize with me, right? This guy was reckless. I think he was high, right? And he ignored the warnings I gave him over and over and over again. It could have hurt my dad really, really bad. So it's probably easy to sympathize me. But the extent of my anger revealed something in me that was not good and not of God. And I'm actually grateful for that in retrospect, for that moment, for what came after. But when you don't deal with anger, here's what happens. And now it doesn't like happen, like 
in, the, in these quick moments. But over time, what happens is you begin to resent the person you're angry at. And the more you resent them, you begin to hate them. And when you hate long enough, listen to me, you will act out. And when you act out on hatred, it's rage. Right? Rage isn't like this like simple, I'm kind of angry. Rage is like an explosion. Anger happens. It's normal. It's part of being a human. But if we don't respond wisely, bad things happen. Proverbs chapter 29, verse 11. It says, a fool gives full vent to their anger. That means like as soon as they get angry, they just kind of, they don't think, they just like release whatever they think and feel and they say these things and do. But the wise person brings what? Calm. Thank you, one person. Pay attention. They bring calm. Maybe I just didn't hear you. You're like, calm, 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 calm. Okay. A, a fool gives full vent to their anger, but the wise person brings calm in the end. God's remedy is calm and peace. Philippians chapter 4, verse 7 says, this is a good one, man. This is one of those to write on like a, like a little uh, index card and put above your mirror. It's in the bathroom so you see it every day. It says this, that God's peace will guard your heart and your mind as you live in Christ Jesus, as you, as you live out this Christian life. God's peace guards your heart and your mind. Peace, the, the peace that God gives is both a confidence, like, like people say, what is peace? What does it mean? Is it just, does it just mean that I feel calm? Or is that calm that comes from God something deeper than just feeling relaxed? Yes, yeah, definitely deeper. God's peace is a confidence that you are loved and accepted by God just as you are. And that confidence then allows you to make a decision. And that decision is to calmly surrender everything to God. When you believe that you're loved by God and accepted just as you are, you begin to learn, and it's not overnight. It's a little baby steps, a couple forward, one back. But you begin to, to surrender everything to God. This is peace. The calm surrender to God in all things. Here, the big verse, we already read it. I want to read it one more time. Proverbs 29, verse 11, the end says, the wise bring Calm in the end. Here's what the word bring means in this old, old, ancient verse. It literally means it's what's revealed, right? Like me on the go-kart track, most people would have said, man, I was solid. And I was in a lot of ways. But I had some stuff going on, stuff in the basement, deep down in my heart. And it doesn't just come out like, it's not going to come out at church when I'm singing songs, Right? Or like, you, you know, a little conflict at work. It's something little. It's not going to come out. But in that moment, on the go-kart track, something big, when I don't have time to like really do much, whatever's in me is going to come out. And what was brought out, what was revealed, was some stuff in my heart that wasn't very good. But it says here, the wise, people that learn to live wise and live under the umbrella of God's peace, you know what you bring out? Home. Peace. So guess what I got for you? I got an acronym. Guess what the word is? That's right. Calm. Right? So there's four. You know that. Here's what I think. Four ways to surrender your anger. Because listen, every one of us deal with anger. And anger is not bad. But it's all about how we respond. So how do you surrender your anger to God's way? So that you can experience his peace that will guard your heart and your mind. And that you will bring out. That you will reveal Peace and calm in the end. All right, here it is, calm. The letter C is this, consider. I read that anger is only one letter away from, anybody? Danger. Yeah, anger danger. It, it's only one. So the idea here is that to consider what's going on inside of you when you get really angry. To do that, you've got to pause. You've got to get working into a habit because in these moments when you get really angry like me on the go-kart track, it needs to be a habit. It needs to be something that you just have worked in 
to your life so much that you're able to pause and consider. Here's a couple things to consider. Why am I this angry? This is what I had to do. This is what Darius helped me do, my buddy on the go-kart track, as we walked inside. I knew why I was angry, right? The doobies, hi, homie, slammed his cart to my dad. I knew why I was angry. But why was I that angry? I just didn't walk around yelling at people I was going to kill them. <laughs> it just wasn't like a part of who I was. And that came out. Why was I that angry? Now, you can say because, you can say because um, whoever you're angry at. Why are you that angry? You could say, well, it's because they said or did this thing to me. But that's too easy. I mean, like blaming another person is too easy. You have to consider, why did it make you that angry? If you'll ask that question, why did I get that angry? Why did I do that in response to my anger? It'll teach you a lot of things about what's going on on the inside. And then consider this. Am I reacting to my anger without thinking? Am I reacting without thinking? Proverbs chapter 17, verse 27. It says, the one who has wisdom uses their words with restraint. And whoever has understanding remains calm. So the first story I told you about, I was 20 years old. The next one I'm going to tell you about, I was 40, maybe 41. It was raining super hard outside. I live in Simi Valley. It's one of those days it rained. The way our back porch is, um, it's, it's just the way it's slanted. When it would rain hardcore, it would start to flood the back porch. And one day, we're watching it rain and, and like the water come up. It was going to pour into our little playroom that's connected to our house. And so we're like squeegeeing, my wife and I squeegeeing the water out. The boys are at school. I'm like, man, I'm going to go, I'm going to go to Walmart and I'm going to get some sandbags because I don't know, we can't squeegee fast enough and it's not supposed to quit raining for like two days. So I jump in the car. I don't know that I jumped, but I got into the car and I, and I drove and I was behind this like big, like work truck and the work truck, I'm not kidding. The work truck was going five miles an hour. Now maybe because of the rain or whatever, but we're on a pretty long back road by, and I'm from Missouri, so I say back roads, but you know, a road that's not near a freeway, or one of the main streets, and, and it's, you know, it's super long, I'm going to go ahead and pass him, that, I've read the driving manual, I've been driving long, that's completely legal, as long as there's no one coming, and as long as when you get back in front of him, your two car links, you know, a uh, space in between, so I do that, and um, he, long story short, this old man that I found out was old, Follows me to Walmart, gets out of the car. I see him pull in. I'm like, oh man, I should. If if uh, Home Depot was closer, I'd just like go out and go to Home Depot, and hopefully he wouldn't want to drive that long. But I don't have time, so I get out of the car and I look at this guy, cowboy hat, cowboy boots, probably 65, right? And he's looking at me and walking over real slow. And I say, hey man, is is everything okay? And he says, hello, young man. What's your name? And he put out his hand to shake my hand. Now, um, I'm from Missouri. Someone older than me who wants to shake my hand, I do that. He called me young man, right? Oh, yes, sir. My name is, I got Dusty out, and he pulled me in. He was actually shorter than me, which tells you how short he is because I'm kind of short. But he was a bull, man. He was stocky, and he was right up under my chin when he pulled me in. And I can't tell you, I can't use the language he said to me, but basically he told me if I ever cut him off, Again, he was going to do some things to me that were very colorful and, and uh, descriptive, right? Now, personality-wise, like we all have fight or flight. We can't help it. It doesn't mean you're brave and it doesn't mean you're weak. It means your first reaction is either this or this, right? I've always been this. I can't help it, right? Got beat up plenty of times because of it. Nothing strong about it. But that's my, and he had a hold of my hand, and he said that, and I know my eyes got linebacker big, right? And I just, big, deep breath, but I've been working on some things over the last 20 years. And I pulled my hand away, and I stepped back. I started, I met, you know, I checked the situation. I don't want to get clocked, you know, by closing my eyes. So I don't close my eyes, but I take a deep breath, and I just said, okay, yes, sir. And that was it. 
had nothing to apologize for, <laughs> so I couldn't say I'm sorry. I was a good three cars, you know, in front of him when I pulled back in, right? But I'm not going to say that either. That's arguing. Okay, yes, sir. He had nothing else to say. Completely disarmed him. And he walked away. I was so proud of myself. Went home. Well, actually, I went home and we fixed the, the rain thing. And, th and then I bragged to my wife later. But here's what I thought about. And this is, this is true. I, what flashed in front of my eyes as he's got my hand and I pull back were the potential consequences if I just, just decide, I don't care, man. This guy laid hands on me. Where I come from, that's like, you know, a big deal and you need to do something, right? But here's what went through my mind. What if one of my, what if one of my boys were with me? What would I want them to see me do? How much does it cost me to pull my hand out and say, yes, sir, okay? It cost me nothing. Matter of fact, it got me into Walmart way quicker to get the, the thing I was there for. What, what, what if I would have fought this old man and he'd have beat me up? There's that. That's a consequence. I have that as a story now, right? What if I'd have hurt this man really bad, right? That'd have been a sweet thing in the paper, right? Local youth pastor, reach up, elderly man. But when you pause, when you consider, before you just unload however you feel, you've got to think about what might happen. Proverbs chapter 29, verse 22, it says, an angry person starts fights. A hot-tempered person commits all kind of sin. Angry person. This isn't somebody who gets angry at something. This is someone who they become known as, you're an angry person. Listen, I've been working with people your age for a long time. Does some of you think you hide it? Did you know that anger is the hardest emotion to hide? It's almost impossible if you know what to look for. Some of you are angry. And there's probably reasons that you should be angry, but you haven't dealt with it in the way that God wants you to. And you think you're hiding it. And I'm not a prophet. I don't see things like mystically. I've just been around young people and humans for a long time. Kind of know what to look for. Some of you are angry. And it's only going to bring you all kinds of trouble. Anger happens. God's remedy is calm and peace. So start by pausing to consider, why am I this angry? What's going on in me? And am I reacting without thinking about the potential consequences? Consider, that's C. A, ask for wisdom. Ask God in prayer for wisdom. Jesus' little brother, James, James chapter 1, verse 5. He says, if you need wisdom, you should ask God who gives us wisdom generously. Now, you may not like the wisdom God gives. It may not be what you want to do, but God will give you wisdom. It's a promise from the Bible. But then, after you ask God for wisdom, then go and share the situation. You've, hopefully, you, you're, you've paused and considered. Now pray, ask God for wisdom, and now go find somebody, probably an adult who's lived a little more life than the rest of your friends. Go and find an adult that you trust and who's godly and wise and share with them what happened and ask them how you should respond, what you should do. Proverbs 12, 15 says, this is good. Hey, listen to this one. Some of you need to hear this. It says, fools, <laughs> fools think their own way is right. But a wise person listens to those who are wise. How do I know if I'm wise? You listen to wise people. You go and ask a wise person for advice. They're wise. They've proven it. They're older. They're godly. You've watched their life. They give you advice. You take it. Guess what? You're wise. Ask for wisdom. Okay, that's A. Consider. You pause. You think some things through. Then you ask. Ask for wisdom. Ask God. Ask a wise, a wise adult. And then love. The L is love. Proverbs 10 says hatred. When you let that anger build up and it turns into resentment and then possibly hatred and rage. It says hatred stirs up conflict, but love covers over all wrongs. Consider this in your mind and see if you think I'm wrong. Because maybe I am. Have you ever experienced that when you're really, really angry with someone, you begin to play out, create a story in your mind that is not completely realistic. 
Have you ever been able to look back on a time when you're really angry and gone, you know what, I really, I got so mad at them and I began to talk about them so much that at some point I began like telling a story that wasn't even all true. It's like my anger gave me some kind of creative power to like add more to the story than was actually there. Instead of doing that, you can love them. Here's how you love someone you're mad at. You ready? Because some of you are deeply angry with somebody right now. So here's how you love someone you're angry with. You honor them. Because you want to be honored, you honor them. You remind yourself that they're human. And because they're human, they deserve respect. You can say, I, I don't respect them. Whoa, hold on. Because I'm assuming you're a follower of Jesus. Well, that means that every human being is made in the image of God, and therefore they deserve respect. You may not respect what they said or did. Totally fair. But you, if you're a follower of Jesus, you must. And if you're not a follower of Jesus, but you don't want to look like an idiot your whole life, you must honor people because you want to be honored. 1 Peter chapter 2, it says, show proper respect to everybody. It doesn't mean you ignore what they did, but you love them by honoring them. Because you'd want someone to do this for you. So that means that like the way you honor someone that you're angry at doesn't mean you ignore, doesn't mean you don't confront but it means you're not going to like just be mean for no reason or even to get revenge. It, it means you're not going to make fun of them. You're not going to slander them behind their back because that's dishonoring them. And you don't want people to do that to you. And if you think, well, I'd never do anything that someone would talk behind. Well, that might be when you need to pause, consider, and look on the inside. You honor them. If you want to love someone you're angry at, you do this. You forgive. Forgive them as Christ forgave you. That's actually straight from the Bible. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32. It's a command. Forgive others the way Christ forgave you. Again, forgiveness doesn't mean that you don't confront or that you act like it didn't happen. But if you're going to forgive someone, it means you're not going to give all your energy into thinking about, fantasizing about how you're going to get even with them, how much you hate them, creating that story about how they ruined your life and how it's their fault and you're a victim and whatever, blah, right? Like you're not going to give that energy. You're going to forgive them. Part of forgiving is just not giving into that, that energy of hatred. And then here's the third one. If you want to love someone that you're angry at, you pray for them. That's the, the, these first two, honor and forgive, you can do them as actions, but this prayer one, you pray for them. Jesus said, pray for your enemies. I've only experienced this hardcore one time in my life. I've only really hated someone once in my life. And I was about 20 years old. Some of that same stuff going on. It's a, it's a story for another time. But, um, but I had to begin to pray for this person every single day. When I say had to, I had to for my soul. And God changed my heart. It didn't happen overnight, but I, I began to see this young man differently. Someone who had hurt someone in my family really, really bad. And God changed my heart. He didn't change this guy, because that's not how it works. You're praying for you. If you want to love someone you're angry at, honor them, forgive them, and pray for them. Instead of reacting to anger, work toward peace by considering, by asking for wisdom, and by loving. Here's the last thing. Move forward. After you've paused and, and made some considerations, you've asked for wisdom, and you've, you've honestly taken some steps of love, then you move forward. Here's what I mean by that. You confront them if you need to. You forgive them if you need to. You apologize. When you begin to consider why you're so angry at someone, the, you know what the easiest thing in the world to do is for you to come tell that wise person what they did. Super easy. You'll know every detail. When you begin to have to consider what you might have done to them, right, even in the past, that's a little more difficult. So you may find as you do work through the, 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 the calm, the, the ask, and the love, you may find that you need to apologize. And listen, they may not respond well to any of that. You cannot control that. Some of you have already experienced this with your own moms and dads. You can't control other people's choices. You may apologize. You may have to confront them in a wise, good way. But all you can control 
is your actions moving forward. And when you do confront or forgive or ask for forgiveness, how if they don't respond good, all you can control is your response to that. Romans chapter 12, verse 8. It says, if it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. All you can control is your response to get calm. So whatever your move forward is, maybe confrontation, apologizing, forgiving, whatever it is, now you can do it in a prayerful, wise, loving way because you've worked through the other three. All right, here's how I want to close. Anger, anger happens, God's remedy is calm and peace. And there's some work to get to the place of calm and peace, but listen, it's possible and it's worth it. I've watched people your age work through some of this and they become the kind of adults that you would aspire to be. Um, how many of you would, raise your hand and be honest, how many of you floss every single day? Floss every day. Oh, some of you, some of my people. I'm a little bit of a freak when it comes to my teeth. I don't have great looking teeth, but I floss and I brush lots every day. I have floss in my office, right? I have like toothbrushes in my office, right? I'm just like, it's just a thing. And I don't know if you know this, but really flossing is in some ways far more important than brushing. Brushing's good. Make your breath smell better too, by the way. Just a tip for some of you dudes, all right, that are starting to like the girls, all right? But like the, the, the food that gets stuck in your teeth, right, if you don't remove that, the bacteria that it releases not only in your mouth, it gets into your gums. And you'll eventually, if you see people with, with fake teeth, right, false teeth, most of the time it's because they didn't take care of their teeth. The, 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 the junk in between their teeth. Anger that you don't deal with is very, very similar. You've got to do the work, and it's hard, and there's a little bit of pain, and it feels awkward when you're not used to dealing with anger in a godly way. But that is the way toward peace. And peace, God's peace, living God's way, that's the floss. That's the floss. Because here's your other option. Like, you can ignore this truth and not deal with this at your age and make the really stupid like thought that oh, when I get older I'll worry about my anger or whatever if you don't deal and learn to deal with it now here's what you be you become that old guy with the cowboy hat who very clearly to me was not just angry he was angry that was another reason I was able to back up this interaction had nothing to do with me Something that happened in 1950, I don't know. That he hadn't done the work, the heart flossing work of dealing with anger. You're going to wake up and you're going to be bitter. And you're going to be a victim. It's everybody else's fault. And listen, I'm telling you, that's not good looking when you're 13 and 17. That's not good looking when you're 40. So Lord Jesus, I want to pray and ask that you would give courage to my friends who have been courageous enough to identify. They've considered in these, in these moments together some stuff going on in their heart. That they're not just, you know, angry every once in a while when something, someone does something wrong because that's normal. We get angry. But the Lord, there's some in here that are beginning to identify that they are deeply angry. There is something going on under the surface in their heart that they become an angry person. And so God, I ask for your grace for those that, as Jesus would say, have ears to hear. God, that you'd give them courage to, to think about someone wise they can talk to, to begin a plan of what it looks like to work in a pause to consider when they get angry, to work in this habit of praying right when they get angry, to seeking out wise counsel, to honoring and to loving the person they're angry about and moving forward in wisdom. God, I pray that you'd give them um, a vision of what it looks like to take those, those next steps. And Jesus, I pray this in your name. Amen.